Boom is a tainted name. For what? All because of one disaster I I and a sh 3DS game resulting in a double whammy and, and also some controversial redesigns and uh, 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 and and miss but the TV show was truly great with super memorable humor like that one time the hooligans tried to kill a child with a blender there's no other punchline he's just straight up killing a child it's glorious and sure two out of four boom games suck one out of four boom gamers <laughs> put the other well voila Fire and Ice truly was a fun game and uh, no one played it, so I can say that. <laughs> you, you can't disprove me. The sheer unpopularity of this Sonic game makes sense. If you're a Sonic fan who didn't even know it existed, uh, I wouldn't blame you. Fire and Ice came out at a very awkward time. September 2016 was a time when boom hype was severely dwindling down. Mania was approaching and then not approaching and even Sonic Project 2017 was on the way. In the face of a potential true return to form, after multiple mech releases, you really think another pseudo 2D boom game was gonna cut it? Hell, Gridius relevance in general was lowering at this point. A new Sonic spin-off on it wasn't really gonna turn heads, and especially a Sonic Boom game. The few people that might have been interested were already gonna be wary. Even I passed up on getting it back then. And I was a huge Sonic fan. But around six years down the line, with some space from all of that toxic discourse surrounding Boom, I like Fire and Ice. They nailed the Sonic feel that they already had in Shattered Crystal. But this time, progression is, uh, what's the word, sane? And the fun parts were doubled down on. Needing to stop and get every collectible isn't a problem anymore. You just beat the levels and keep going. The two games look similar, but it's pretty obvious which is the better game. The the one with the f fires, is that it? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that one. So I know you're burning with the question. What do the R and L do? I'm sick, of, I'm sick of that question so goddamn much. Well, you can either light yourself on fire or enjoy frostbite. Uh, get used to it. This is the main gimmick you're going to be playing around with. Fire can melt ice. Ice can freeze water. I can drink milk really fast. You, you need to keep an eye on your aura while you're moving as the game interrupts and challenges you with changes in the level design. They require you to switch between the two styles constantly. This isn't done in a way that's obnoxious or unbounded. The two abilities really help keep you laser focused on the gameplay. It really doesn't have the issue of automation. Something else Fire and Ice does that's pretty nice is having the full map under the gameplay on the bottom screen. Really taking advantage of the third dual screen here. It's useful to get a heads up on my progression so I can be aware of where I should be going. What might be ahead? Other 3DS games do this. Yeah, I can see it all. Tie that all in with tight controls, knuckles, Amy, surprisingly fun bosses. Just really cool, mazy level design that will constantly come up with new gimmicks to challenge you. And you can't forget a variety of side missions to help break the ice. And you have a very solid Sonic game. Is it perfect? Is it amazing? No, apart from a few creative standouts, level aesthetics do look and feel unmemorable with that plain art style that Boom has. Knuckles' face is a beehive and they don't get too crazy with the main gimmick. What Fire and Ice does, it does very well. Enough to feel fresh throughout each world. As a platformer, it's consistently good and almost never falters. Sometimes solid is fine, especially if the alternative is liquidation. You're in. Ten people talk about this game a week. I was seven of them. I'd even go so far as to say it's on par with other 2D platformers on the console. Hell, I, I alright prefer it over New Mario 2. Yeah, I like it when my games have flavour. <laughs>